We're joined by Stephen Devine, who's our senior electrical engineer at the IET. Stephen, thank you for joining us. Um, just give us a brief overview of what you do at the IET. Hi, thanks, Mark. Yeah, so uh, my position at the IET is primarily um, devoted to developing national standards. Uh, uh, BS7671 for electrical installations, but we also have quite a strong influence and contribution to the development of European and international standards for electrical installations. You talk there about standards, just to give me a kind of quick overview of, of, of why are standards important? Well, back when people started using electricity for different applications, uh, they, they started to meet internationally to display and demonstrate what it is that they were doing. And that's when it became apparent that different voltages, different frequencies cause problems with the use of equipment across different parts of the world. So it was therefore decided to start developing a standard so that everybody was working uh, on the same platform essentially, so that the equipment and the application of the use of electricity would work on a, a global scale. Here in the UK, um, we, we developed the national standard, which is BS7671. And that is developed by our national committee, JPL64, and the subcommittees A, B, C and D, which deal with various different aspects of BS7671. Now, we take uh, a lot of our standards, or we adopt the technical intent from CENELEC. Now, CENELEC is the Essential European Normalisation for Standardisation. So they develop standards on a European level that are applicable across all the European members. Now, there's a tier above there, which is called um, the, the, the IEC standard 60364. Now, that's developed by the International Electrotechnical Commission. Uh, and it, specifically in relation to electrical installations, it's the standard uh, IEC 60364. So if you like, IEC develops a global framework for standardization. And then we have CENELEC, which develops a European framework for standardization. And then we get down into all the individual countries where we have our national standards, like ours here in the UK, BS7671. So, you know, it's a pretty global thing then, all of this standardization. And, and how has the pandemic that we're currently in, in the lockdown we're currently in, how's that affected you? Because I believe you're supposed to be at an international meeting just a couple of days ago. That's right. So there has undoubtedly been a, a bit of a slowing in the process of the development of standards with respect to getting to the physical meetings and getting involved with the technical discussions that really look into the requirements that go into international European and British standards. However, Things haven't stopped completely. We've still been progressing. We've been moving along. We've been holding web meetings. and We've been getting through some of the formalities, some of the areas of standardization that don't need deep technical discussion. So in essence, even though there's, you know, very little flying going on, very little traveling going on, non-essential travel has completely stopped, you guys are still managing to keep this thing going and you're pretty confident you're going to get the next edition out on time. That's right. Yeah. So on an international level, things are still moving and it does move fairly slowly on an international level in comparison to our national standard. But uh, luckily, the majority of the work that is required for BS7671 for the, the next amendment has already been done by the subcommittees. So the technical aspects have been discussed in depth and we're moving into a different part of the programme now, which deals with looking at the drafts and proofing the various um, proposals that have been proposed. So things are still moving along. Yes, maybe a little bit slower, but we're lucky we're in that stage of the programme now where the, the physical meetings where we have in-depth technical discussions um, are, you know, they've passed th that phase. So we can now just look at the administrative process, the proofing process and preparing the, the draft for public comment. It's great to hear that things are still moving forward and, and, and it isn't really going to affect it, which is a real, real positive thing. But it's only a few months back since we heard about Brexit and, and really that's disappeared out of all the media. Has that had an, an effect on you or is that something else that, that, that's just going to carry on as normal, as it were? Well, it's a really good question. and It's a question that comes up on a national level as well as on a European level. You know, the, our European sort of counterparts are all quite interested in how the UK is going to um, continue to contribute to, to European standards. So when the referendum was held and the, 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 the voting results were, were made clear, um, BSI and the IET had already engaged in communication with Senelec 
to try and uh, come to an agreement that would continue uh, following the European standards, or at least harmonising in some way. Uh, and that has uh, a number of benefits. You know, it, it would be really detrimental to the UK if we were to go a separate way in standardisation. You would have various trade barriers, and um, we we also are, are very privileged to have the input of all these European members who are working hard on improving safety standards. So we're still working with them. We are going to continue working with them. So I suppose the the short answer to your question is no. There's not going to be a difference in standardisation. Uh, with regards to Brexit, business will be continuing as usual.